it seems like I talk smack about Chinese cinema a lot in this channel. Not my intention, I swear. So, why don't we balance it out? I'm going to recommend you a few Chinese language films. 50, how about that? They are all films I have watched that I think will be worth your time. I'll include some mainstream entertainment, some art house classics, and some lesser known cult films, all organized by genre. I'll pick films that stood the test of time, so I'll avoid stuff that is too recent. The list will also skew heavily towards Hong Kong cinema, because that's just what I'm most familiar with. Sorry, Singapore. If you don't see a movie on this list, feel free to share recommendations in the comments. Without further ado, here are 50 Chinese movies to watch before you kick the bucket. Let's start with action, the one genre you think of when you think of Chinese movies. Drunken Master 2 is probably my favorite, and arguably the most well-made kung fu movie of all time. If you are a Tarantino fan, his recommendation would probably be Clan of the White Lotus, where the character of Pai Mei came from, and Iron Monkey, where Tarantino himself acted as the US producer. And if you like Iron Monkey, Once Upon a Time in China and Fong Sai Yuk are both similar folk hero films, and both feature Jet Li. But my favorite classic kung fu flick has to be The Prodigal Son, and the 36th chamber of Shaolin. Both films perfectly capture the feel of a traditional Chinese fable. Simple in story, deep in meaning. Outside of ancient Chinese settings, there is Fist of Legend. Both the setting and the martial art are a bit more contemporary. It's actually a remake of Bruce Lee's Fist of Fury, which is also worth watching, and I believe to be Bruce Lee's best work. Another Jet Li flick, The Bodyguard from Beijing, it's cheesy as all hell, but damn if it's not a good time. Ip Man needs little introduction. I made a whole video about it, but Donnie's other modern action flicks like SPL and Flashpoint are also worth watching for the brutal MMA action alone. According to Jackie Chan, his best film is Police Story. I don't disagree, but I think Crime Story's focus on suspense over humor makes it a superior film in terms of narrative. For wuxia movies, you can't go wrong with Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. It was, at one point, the highest grossing foreign language film. There's also Hero from Zhang Yimou, where the film is so visually stunning, we learned about it in film school in Canada. 2011's Dragon brings in a rather unique indie feel to the genre. But if you want the best of the best, Wong Kar Wai's Ashes of Time is for the hardcore cinephiles among you. It's hard to include a comedy section because it would just be dominated by a single actor. Really, pretty much the entire filmography of Stephen Chow prior to 2004 is made of classics. But if I have to pick the best, Flirting Scholar for the best classic Stephen Chow, From Beijing with Love for a good political satire, Fight Back to School 1 and 2 for both action and comedy, Kung Fu Hustle for the artistic achievement alone, and Shaolin Soccer is, I think, his best film overall. Outside of Chao, Return to the 36th Chamber is also a good comedy. Sequel to the Kung Fu classic might be the inspiration for Karate Kid. Shaolin Popeye is also another Kung Fu comedy, featuring the most beloved child actors in Chinese movie history. The sequels aren't half bad either. Mr. Vampire is one of those movies that I want to talk more about in the future. Just know that it combines action, special effects, horror, and zany humor expertly well, and started a Jiangxi craze in Asia. Mr. Vampire 3 is also good, and you don't have to watch the first two, so you can skip over the craptastic second installment. Nobody talks about the 10 brothers, but I grew up watching this batshit insane comedy. There's a man giving birth to five demigod children. You have to add it to the list. For a modern setting, Aces Go Places is a great comedy spoof of the James Bond series, years before Austin Powers become a thing. For a more wholesome touch, 
tried luck on a diet where two fatties fall in love. Finally, Crazy Stone is a mainland Chinese indie hit that makes fun of many Chinese social phenomena. It's worth it if you are into cultural study. Crime and thriller is a popular genre for social commentary. They are rarely enter the views of foreign audience, but their impact is global. Chief among them, Infernal Affairs, one of the most intense crime dramas ever. The Oscar-winning movie The Departed is based on it. Young and Dangerous is a comic book-based movie about youth crime in Hong Kong. It's worth it just for the cultural relevance. But the movie is so popular, there are tons of sequels and spin-offs, many of which are also worth checking out. Manga, on the other hand, is about Taiwanese gangs. When it came out, it got a lot of attention in Taiwan, especially for its realistic violence. Speaking of violence, John Woo's A Better Tomorrow, The Killer, and Hard Boiled are all cinematic masterpieces that transform gunfights forever. Johnny To, however, is like wine to John Woo's Moonshot. Election is an all-time classic crime movie, and Breaking News is worth a watch just for the 7 minute long one take opening shootout. And his relatively recent film Drug War proves that this genre is still going strong. Finally, let's talk about drama. Stephen Chow's King of Comedy deserves a mention, because it's not a comedy, damn it. Another Hong Kong classic drama is Comrades, almost a love story. It's worth it just for the soundtrack alone. Yi Yi, also known as The One and The Two, is perhaps one of the best Taiwanese movies ever made. Certainly a landmark film in Taiwanese second wave. But Ang Lee's Eat Drink Man Woman is also great. I briefly talked about it in an earlier episode, and it's enough to make people teary. For something a bit more suspense oriented, Suzhou River is your indie go to. Named after the river that was famous for catching on fire once, it's the perfect film reflecting on the harsh underbelly of China. Let the bullets fly is relatively recent but it's already clear that it will be remembered as a monumental film. The metaphor within is dense, but it's still enjoyable with surface text only. But if you want the best mainland Chinese drama, you can't get much better than Farewell My Concubine and Race the Red Lantern. One examines the prejudice on homosexuality, the other the oppressed of women. Both beautiful to look at and thought-provoking throughout. Finally, that's my favorite film of all time. Not just favorite Chinese film, but films everywhere. In the mood for love. It's poetry in celluloid form. Never have I seen a film so touching, so sad, and so beautiful. Which is a strange thing to say, because at the risk of sounding like a complete snob, it's a fairly slow and boring movie to a casual audience. So, why am I recommending it? Well, because next episode, I will try to show you how to view this film, to see beyond the textual story, and understand the language of film better. And hopefully, we can enjoy the film together. I'll see you in two weeks. <laughs>